Hello, my name is Xavier Mercado, and this is Spearhead Conversations. Today, I am joined by special guest, Daniel Zia Zapata. Hey, where pa? Air personality, radio host on the morning show of KISS FM. You know him as DZ. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you say that D too long, and he's like, what's he about to say? Yeah. DZ, Z, just that's it, that's it, that's it. <laughs> yes, indeed. But we have him here today. For seven years, he's been blessing the airways of Milwaukee. We reached out through the interview with Ali, but um, he said yes. So we're here today. I'm very happy. I'm very proud. Um, so without further ado, how you doing, DZ? Good, man. I appreciate you for uh, <laughs> inviting me on to, to speak with you, bro. This is really dope. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is an awesome opportunity to, to sit down, chop it up with you, and just get to it, man. So thank you for having me, for real. Hey, man, you know what I mean? You were part of Milwaukee. You Every day waking up, man, I listen to you on the radio with Ali. And, like, honestly, you know, when we had the radio station visit, I, I really meant what I said when, it, like, having that representation on on air. Yeah. I felt that was missing for so so long. Yeah. Like if, if not, <laughs> since I've been listening to the radio like that, but um to have this type of representation with you, it, it, it this station means a lot more. You know what I mean? So I I'm I I feel honored that you, you know what I mean? You, you want to take part, you know? It's it's a it's a collective and uh I'm just trying to unite the city, man. I'm sick of the negative stereotypes. I'm sick and tired of our city get catching a bad rep. Mm-hmm. It's like, come on, man. Mm-hmm. We got we got beautiful people here that have more than skills. So, man, talent, talent yeah. is an understatement, man. In any oh, yeah. degree, right? Yeah, I believe man. that, bro. For real, for real. So that's dope. Yeah, it, it's a culture, man. Especially during the summers, you know what I mean? With summer fest, solstice, uh, your Brady Street festivals, right. you know, like everything, yeah, everything like that. That's just a scratch, <laughs> boy. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, man, uh, I'm happy to have you on, and let's jump right in it. Let's get it. All let's right. Go. So, where were you born? I was born in a different country, man. I was born in Medellin, Colombia. South America. Get mm-hmm. it, my boy. Yeah, man. 1993 <laughs> was the year that birthed me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Can we get... Hey. Uh. <laughs> Come on, man. Don't start playing that right away, man. You're going to get me kicked in. <laughs> get all this stuff wet, man. Oh. Uh, well, man, Colombia? Yeah, yeah, man. They did Colombia, man. Both my parents are from there. My dad is uh, from the coast. From um uh Quibdo, which is a very small town, man. He grew up, you know, you know, really poor. And yeah. then my mother is from Medellin, the inner parts, Antioquia. So, you know Oh, it's both sides. Yeah, both sides, both sides. Mother and father, man. We got Afro Latinos everywhere, man. Oh we, yeah. We got the Afro all over the world. You know what it is. I was just telling uh I was just telling Promise this. I did the twenty three and me, the the basically the ancestry test, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, man. Thirty uh, percent West African, bro. Hey, let's get it. Fifty six percent Spanish Portuguese. Oh snap! <laughs> oh, okay. For real, Puerto Ricans don't play. <laughs> <laughs> Dog, I'm too scared to do those, man. Oh no, man, you'd be shocked, man. Really? I, I, there's a lot of stuff that, bro. I, I don't want to get canceled for this, but I'm a Jew. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. Oh, you got you got it from everywhere, man. You protected. <laughs> yeah. You solid. You got uh, a little native. In? Like yeah, a little bit oh, of native definitely. In you, bro, I was gonna say, definitely man. got the native. You in good? Me. You listen, Portuguese. <laughs> what? What else was it? Spanish. Yeah. You got Jewish. Jewish. You, you got Latino. Oh, yep. You Come got, on now, you got West African. It's crazy. What man. are you missing? Con- Dude, man, I don't I, think I, I think you. you hit it all, man. I, <laughs> I say just, we we mutts out here, man. We mutts. That's what up. Mutts hey, unite, baby. Hey, I saw the the application. I just checked off the boxes. Yep, that's me. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, you you know, at one point, my dad tried to tell me that uh we got irish in my family oh wow on his side oh wow on his side but you know what that's the crazy thing about those tests bro uh-huh. it will probably come out that you actually do i mean i do got cousins with red hair but i know that's not like the end all <laughs> be all trait no for real i got black cousins with red hair yeah story, man story man for, I, I got the picture to prove it like oh. he, he really he pulled up had his stuff greased laced yep. out, everything i was like wow yeah man yo looking clean out here you man. gotta love genetics dog man for <laughs> real. i got a couple strands so it's like i might believe it i don't know yeah. so how long were you in Colombia? 
uh, very short time. Very and short? It's, yeah, it mm -hmm. sucked. So it was a crazy time in the 90s, man. So I was born in 93 okay. uh, in June, right? Mm -hmm. So at that time, there had just been like a flip of power, if you will, yes. with the whole Escobar era. There. Oh, I remember. He, yeah. He, he had yep. just passed recently. So mm -hmm. um, ironically enough, I had family on my father's side that was uh, kind of involved in that, In not in a negative sense, man. You, I mean, you got people everywhere doing that, a lot of things. Like family did what they had to do. But yeah. on my father's side, um, we had somebody that, that was in uh, a task force that was – Assistant, that. assistant, yeah. So my father, who his brother had very similar qualities, they were identical, basically not twins, but mm -hmm. identical. Mm -hmm. um, my uncle had a lot of attempts on his life, so there was a I believe it, a big man. fear in the '90s growing up. And when I was coming along, my parents kind of talked about it, sat down, and was like, "This is a really dangerous place that mm -hmm. we feels like to to raise a child right now." So, yeah, man, '93 rolled around. I was born in. By '96, we were in the in the U.S. man wow. off of political asylum. Well, hey man, I, I'm happy that you know that transition was there because man, you look at the documentaries and you look at the what transpired in mm -hmm. those areas. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't only that. I think it was Venezuela. Yep. It was it was Central America, man. It, yeah, it, Central it just, South, all that. It, it was just like up in flames, man. So just <laughs> <laughs> literally, we man. found <laughs> we found the freedom. But right. um, yeah. Well, thank God you here, man. Man. I uh, <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Yeah. So how was it growing up here? Uh, it was interesting. I'm pretty sure, like, that's all you know. Then like, it was yeah. really interesting because mm -hmm. I got I got glimpses of like faded memories. You know oh, what wow. I'm saying? Of okay. like staircases and no hardcore memories of Colombia. Yeah. Besides the memories I've made since I've been back, right? Mm -hmm. But growing up here was was weird because it's like I'm a little black kid. Growing up in a space where I speak Spanish and only Spanish at home yeah. 100% of the time, no matter what I'm doing, right? Mm -hmm. Yet I go out in the street and I'm treated differently by every class of person that I ever meet, yeah. no matter what it is. Because, you know, you go into certain neighborhoods, it's because you're black. You go into certain neighborhoods, it's because you're Hispanic. You go into other neighborhoods, they're trying to figure out. And, and after a certain point, you just kind of get a little paranoid about your surrounding, right? Yeah. So it's like, you know, past a certain point, you're just like... What am I supposed to be doing? Who am I? Like, what's going on? Everybody's kind of telling me I, I am this. I'm not that. I, I got to claim that and mm -hmm. do this. And man, I just kind of want to do my own thing, man. I'll I'll as tell a you, kid, it's a hard influence. I'll tell you, growing up, man, I got the strong features. Like, But the complexion, you know what I mean? Like, you wouldn't think it. But, yeah, f feeling that that type of... You know when you're being treated the wrong way. Mm -hmm. You it's, know what I mean? It's the feeling. It's the feeling. It's like that gut feeling. Not being able to sleep at friends' house because I... Because I don't know different. why. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but, I don't know why at the moment, but you look back and you start mm -hmm. realizing for what it is, it's like it was because you look different. Right. And you know, I, I feel like with people, they're scared of what they don't know. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact of the matter is like we're one race. Bro, we're one race, man. man. We bleed the same, bro. So it was kind of, you know, when I look back and I start thinking about times like that, it's disappointing that people were that, you know, just – Ignorant, could I say? Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, ignorant, man. But um, so when you moved from Colombia, mm -hmm. where did you move? Uh, so we moved in with family originally. My yeah. cousins were already here. Yeah. My uncle on my mother's side. So my uncle on my mother's side had already made the move over here through his own means. And was established, had his wife, had his two yeah. sons, and were here. What so city? So we moved in with them in Illinois. Illinois. Uh, okay, yeah, got yeah. you, so got you. So originally we first moved in with them in a little, you know, a little rinky-dink house in Illinois, lived in the basement in like a one-room basically, right, and shared that space. They lived upstairs in the house, and we were downstairs until we got our own place. Then we lived in North Chicago. But, you know, when you first get here, you just yeah. kind of figure it out, right? And oh, sure. my, my father came first, right? And mm -hmm. then I think it was like— Six months later, give or take, right, that we came next, my mother and I, because it was just the three of us at the time. It was yep. it was easy to pick up and move, and honestly, mm -hmm. out of necessity, you know, your, your mother gets held that enough po knife point for, for sure. a watch that, I mean, was it real gold? Was it not? Who knows? I mean, they say it was, but, like, yeah. it is what it is. Like, <laughs> you make moves right there when you got a, when you got a baby on the way, right? So Yeah, for sure. It's like you, we get here, and it's a whole different life. It, it's not milk and honey, but it really is a breath of fresh air for somebody mm -hmm. that just felt like, you know, their life and their family's life was in jeopardy. It, it's, it's an opportunity, you know what I mean? And, you know, mm -hmm. you see that with all, you know, the immigrants that come over. 
it's it's you know first the man goes over because obviously that's the bread you mm-hmm. know what i mean got to form up that base and then do there you bring over your loved ones yep. um yep. i can only imagine a mother you were in the womb at the no no you were 3 uh when we came it, yeah. Uh, yeah i you was were three. 3 i was 3 okay, right got but, you. but still that era. even that you you your mother a strong woman at that because during that time of turmoil, yeah, you know, you have a three year. I have a three year old right now, bro. Right, right. And I will say, at all the stages that when you watch your children grow, this is this is the ultimate favorite because <laughs> the, like, the time yeah. of the baby stages. I was saying, my, my son yeah. turns two in July, man. So I get it. Yeah, man. man. It just get it's, it's like the little human, a little human with a big head, and he's uh, like it just in his head. But uh, goofy, you know, straight it, goofy to get over here. So <laughs> you know, through that transition, mm. from what you remember, how how was it for you, like? When I when I say um, that that type of transition, you sp- you s- you spoke Spanish fluently. Right, right. How was that barrier of meeting new people? Um, well, being so young, yeah, man, a child's mind is a sponge. Yeah. We absorb things so quickly, and you got to think in in like '96, you had so many things popping off as far as like television and different media's. Yeah, that we got here. And all of a sudden, televisions were everywhere. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, everybody had one. And all of a sudden, you're watching so many different things. And you're listening to a new environment. And honestly, my parents are learning how to speak the language, too. So it's like, yeah. we're all sitting down and, and practicing, practicing yep. Ingles in Barreras, papi, trying to, trying to figure <laughs> it out, right? Yeah. Like, everybody remembers those commercials, like the big old blue yeah. box set. Like, everybody either had that or the bootleg, right? But For sure. But you were learning the language and... I, by the time I was in kindergarten, I mm-hmm. was good. You know, I, I was kind of just speaking the language. I was in it, and my accent it was like a a defined accent. Where in Spanish, mm-hmm. bro, I, I sound Hispanic, right? Yeah, but in yeah, English, sure. I don't know if many people would ever tell. But it's because of the media and all the things that I consume. That's like that mm-hmm. transition for me. That blessed man, that yeah. it was easy being so young coming in the the period of time where like everything in media was so prevalent yeah. that you're like boom absorption rate overload. Oh, sp- speak for the sure. language right yeah. now, right now. Like Damn. less than a year, probably honestly. Like you'd have to ask my mother. I could call her. <laughs> <laughs> so childhood mainly for you. Well, you transitioned into the language, but um, what type of things were you into growing up? A little bit of everything. Yeah, a little bit of everything. Honestly, okay. man, I, I was really I was an artistic kid, so I enjoyed drawing, building stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I honestly I enjoyed theater and whatnot, like the the arts. When yeah. I was younger, I did instruments, but I also loved sports. I'd be out and about, man. Soccer was my thing. And I mean, I still love soccer to this day. But, you know, when we came here, then I was exposed to everything else. Yeah. Everybody was a Chicago Bulls fan in the 90s. <laughs> yeah, and, and, Jordan. And, and the, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Come on, man. Robin, like, to this day. Even Curry, like, come on. Like, yep. to this day. To yep. this day. You know, uh, living in Illinois, growing up in that Chicagoland area, mm-hmm. Bulls fan, naturally, it's like, but, you know, you transition and and now I'm going to say it, like, bro, I'm, I'm a Bucks fan now, so it's like... That's right. You, you heard it here <laughs> first. Let's, yeah, you heard it. You, you evolved, man. You evolved. Goodbye, Chicago. <laughs> so is love, man, but, but I, it's hard I, not yeah. to enjoy that and watch the ride that they had, but it's like, of course. Um, you know, I, I was influenced in, in, by sports heavily and did karate, um, you know, taekwondo. I did mm. baseball for about a day and then realized it wasn't for me because I had the right cleats on and I couldn't <laughs> hit the ball. But, you know, yeah. I, I got obviously soccer. And then mm-hmm. you, you dip into so many different things because we, we lived in the community space. So you'd go to the community park, the rec, and then do whatever they had for the summer. And then you do camps and clubs and a bunch of random stuff. So my parents tried to immerse me in a little bit of everything. My mother made sure I was eclectic in that regard, right? Like yeah. instruments early on. You know, mm-hmm. played the saxophone for a little bit. Then I got into That's the fire. snare, and I was like, ah, I don't like the snare. And then I dropped the saxophone, and I just kept moving. I, I'm yeah. a tinkerer, but I'm dang near ADD, so I yeah. just want to keep going and moving and <laughs> doing something, man, for real. Oh, man. <laughs> so when when was it that you—what's your earliest memory of, of music becoming something you found interest in? Um, man, my parents. Yeah. You know, when—, when memories first started to really shape we had started 
hanging out with a key group of uh, Colombians, Puerto Ricans, yeah. a couple Venezuelans, Dominicans, whatnot. At home, um, when, you know, home base, yeah. one of our peoples had, like, the party house, if you will, where For sure. Friday night, Saturday night, yep. maybe even a little Sunday oh, morning, man. it was cracking. And you'd end up there, everybody would pull up, and parents would be in the basement dancing. Kids, kids, kids go, would be yeah. Doing whatever. Go like, whatever. <laughs> literally, what, it was the 90s. Hey, baby. there was no supervision. <laughs> I'll put it out there. <laughs> Babysitter, what? No. So it's like... You know, that was my first influence in music was going to the basement, grabbing some of the food because, you know, the parents kept the food by them, not by yep. the kids, naturally. That's going right. to the basement, trying to grab a plate, and then, you know, peeping, seeing what everybody's doing. Man, yeah. You know what I'm saying? A little <laughs> bit of everything, man. A little mondongo, yeah. oh. a little sancochito, some arrocito, <laughs> la bandeja paisa, some empanada, Let's buñuelo. Get it. Todo, pan de queso, todo, don't keep, todo, don't keep todo. saying that shit. I'm starting man, to get uh, hungry, come on, bro. Man, I'm saying, like, what time is it? We can order out. <laughs> we can order out right now. Like, there's a spot that does Colombian food, you know. A couple, actually, I'm I'm discovering them in the city. I now, got a man. question. What's did, up? Did you drink Maltas growing up? Look, oh, come on, bro. Come on, oh, my Mal God. Malta, Let's baby. Get Malta. Look, hey, I tried giving my friends growing up Malta, bro. They all spit it out, and it's just like it's acquired taste. It, you had to be raised on. Had to it. be there. You had to be there. Had to, to be there, know right? You had to be there. I'm sorry you weren't. Malta, <laughs> just ooh, yeah. Mm. It hits the spot. Man, <laughs> I'll snag some from Woodman's any, any chance I get. El Rey's, I'm, bro, boy. Yeah. I'm shocked at pit, uh, like Walmart pick and save finally catching little the drift. Pack. Little yep. six Boom. pack. Bloop. Uh, <laughs> shout out Pony, you know, Pony Boy. Shout out, <laughs> shout out Pony Malta, man. That's a Colombian brand. So um, earliest, you say, you know, through the, the parties, what type of uh, music was it? And obviously, we know this Latino background, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? What were ty some of the, the artists that your parents used to li listen to? Uh, well, down downstairs, it was uh, Grupo Nietzsche, okay. Joy Arroyo, Jorge mm -hmm. Celeron. Like, it was, Did uh, you ever listen to Pipinela? Uh, peep I mean, I guarantee you it was old, yeah, man. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it was a heavy rotation. Mm -hmm. And it's not like you always heard the same five songs. Catalogs were so long. For sure. They put on the whole whole album and just let it rock. Yeah. Literally let it rock to the tape pop. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it, and upstairs it was dipping into a little more of the the Selenas, yep. some, of, some of the rock and roll, some hip hop, mm -hmm. rap too. So upstairs with the kids, I had family, you know, that you, like you said it's the family you create sometimes, have family upstairs mm -hmm. that were basically bumping the stuff that shaped my adulthood, right? Okay. But then downstairs was the OGs OGs mm -hmm. that were shaping my my youth and kind of like my original influence and in, in my roots, right? So it's like yeah. it was the parallels of the the levels, like downstairs with the OGs and upstairs a level up was like the future, right? So I was between yeah. them both, man. Yeah, who 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 would you say music wise were influences of yours that you really look to for for a kind of direction in music mm. from people to the music you actually listen to? Yeah, man. <sighs> That's a question because it's like I bopped around, you know, mm -hmm. like at, before music was just playing. And one of my first experiences with music, right, like that I can remember mm -hmm. was being in the car listening to the radio. Mm -hmm. So it's like you sometimes didn't know who it was or what's that what. You had to listen or you had to call back in and you had to do some. So it's like it's hard to say what original was. But mm -hmm. as far as like when we moved here, man, when I discovered Outkast, when ooh, I discovered Luda, ooh. like I mean, the first CD I think uh, I think my my stepbrother got me was a Pac CD. It was like a best of Pac. You yep, know, na yep. naturally he had already passed, mm -hmm. but it was like a in that era where who and I'm pretty sure I called I them. I think Tupac. it was with the album the where, first time. I was yeah. like, who's Tupac? And they flamed me, bro. Oh, I got rid <laughs> so bad, <laughs> so bad. They were like, what? It's Tupac. Oh, no. And I'm like, oh man, I'm sorry. Like, I don't know. Bro, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, bro, I'm like three. Like, what are you? Yeah. Like, I'm I turn four soon. Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? But yeah, man. But you know, but, like stuff like that. And then obviously you. You kind of listen to a lot, right? Because Latinos, mm -hmm. you, kinda, you got avenues. Yeah. You know, certain racial stigmas will be like, for whatever reason, when well, you're black, you only listen to R&B and hip-hop. You're Latino, you only listen to salsa and bachata, yeah. right? Like, oh, you're Polish, you already know, um pop, baby, like, that's what you get. But there's certain avenues of la Latinohood that, like, yep. will dip off. And do their own thing. And in, in any genre, too, like, the Afro side will just dip off. Like, And I was in that subgroup that... 
I listened to System of a Down. Right? Like, I found Bro, corn, you know? For like, real? Corn, one, System of a Down? Like, one of my first five CDs was, like, a, a SOAD CD, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, pff, wake up! And my wife would be like, next, and click it on me. And it'd be like, like, whoa. Can I get at least like 10, 15 seconds? You know what I'm saying? Can oh, I get a yeah. little bit? Because all, all those things, one, one, music makes you feel some type of way, right? It either yeah. helps you release or helps you create or it, it helps you maintain or withstand, sure. right? But then at the same time, they're, they're memories and it's a time. So it's like when I hear those songs or when I hear that music, especially some of those throwbacks like that are throwbacks to me, at least from those artists, I get a sense of nostalgia of like when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So, you, you know, you, you're growing up, you grew up, in, you're growing up in Illinois. Um Throughout school, did you um, you said you, you, you did instruments that was that through high school as well? Uh, middle school. Middle school. Yeah, oh, okay. so we technically started off in elementary school. Everybody either starts with the recorder or it'll pop the flute for a little uh, bit. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Get that Liz on. <laughs> I did the choir, bro. Excuse me. But I, oh, you all good. Yeah, so it's like you, you try it all, and then, like I said, I set it on the saxophone. Sax. Yeah, to me, I was like, that's dope. Well, let me go ahead and get my Steve Harvey on. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> get some Scott Summers in here, I, man. Bruh, I <laughs> could barely read music, though. I was out there like Nick Cannon and Drumline, man. I was just freestyling, but yeah. I was getting it, right? You were so, getting it. So it's like, I. I don't know how to play, but I'm naturally just gifted in it. And that's not a flex yeah. on me. I'm not like, boy, I can play the piano. I can do the bro. I can't play. I cannot play. You I, hand it to me today. Yeah. My lips get too dry now. I don't know, man. I think, and, and this is not to uh, to group out any other group, but I, I feel like with with Latinos, you know what I mean. The rhythm, mm. you it's it's embedded in, mm. into who you are. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. Like I used to dance with growing up. Like dance oh, yeah. was like. It's just when you feel that rhythm and you can really sway with the 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 the, the melody, bro. Come on, that's all you need. Come on, yeah, how you think I got my wife? El ritmo, <laughs> baby, el ritmo, right? Like it, it, it's sauce. The they, first them kids call it riz now. <laughs> <laughs> the first night I met my wife, I actually it was we uh, through a group of friends helping. We met out for dancing, and yeah, hey. I swept her off the feet. You know, what but I'm yeah, like you say, you you, good. <laughs> you got the music. Yeah, you felt the music through the saxophone. Uh -huh. So when you when you got to high school, mm -hmm. at what point was it during high school that you figured this is something you wanted to pursue, or did that come? After high school, um, as far as radio, like or you know, music, just music because music is the, is the it's it's what harnesses everything together, you know, you, with your profession and everything. Yeah. So, when you were in high school, was it about was it about music or? As soon as high school, you were actually thinking about, I want to go in the direction of radio. Well, uh, crazy enough, man, I wasn't necessarily thinking radio, mm -hmm. right? I mean, in high school, yeah. you know what you're focused on in high school, like mm -hmm. academics, right? You know what I'm saying? Like 100%. <laughs> so I was, I, was, I was hitting them books hard, right? Yeah, yeah. We were hitting them books hard. <laughs> so I was hitting them books, baby. So I was trying to get straight A's. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but... Nah, man, like it's, it's your priorities are in other places. And at that rate, I was wrestling, I was playing football, I was doing track and field. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was, I was trying to talk to a girl, you know, and if that wouldn't work out, I was just going to try to talk to another one. For you feel sure. me? Like, oh, definitely. So at that rate, I, I don't think it was even about that. I don't even think I knew I wanted to go on the radio. Like, I was just trying to figure it out. In high school, I basically thought I was either going to join the marines or or mm -hmm. just like do community college and and go into the trades like something i was just thinking man i'm trying to get paid right yeah. like once i get out i don't know i wasn't necessarily aiming for college and going radio man and and once college became an option i was thinking teaching you know i, I was considering getting into education just because i come from a line of educators yeah um for you know from my mother and, and back like it's like all right, well, why wouldn't I naturally get into that? I love kids. Kids love me back, man. DZ for the kids. Yeah, <laughs> so there you go. I was thinking, no brainer. I go yeah. and I go into education. Like I would, those who, who can't do teaching, I wasn't no good in school. So, <laughs> <For sure. laughs> tried to focus on the academics, but the academics ain't focused on me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 
Then, you know, you graduate, you obviously went through. Mm -hmm. We got all into those academics. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, how long after was it that um, it, it, it did become you You kind of had, did you fall upon this or was it something thought out? And I, I, I know you were talking about how it was in high school, right, but post right. high school. Right. Right after that, man, um, I decided to go to school, right? Yeah. And I was like, cool, I'm going to do education, but... You decide to go into education. There's a bunch of prerequisites that come before that, right? Yep. The prereqs before you actually get into the major. Mm -hmm. And even the prereqs, I started thinking about it and went, I'd be a dope sub. But I don't think I actually want to be a teacher, you know, so young then, cat. Yeah. So I was like, what else is going on? And there was a new major, communication, up at Lakeland College at the time. Now it's Lakeland University. Yeah. And the guy, John McKenzie, was mm -hmm. my one of my professors for Intro to Com, you know, a, a pre-read course that everybody got to take. For and sure. he was kind of trying to persuade people to get into the major. And I went, communication, what's that? Yeah. Right? Mentally, I'm like, communication is something you do. It's not a job. Yeah. You talk, you talking? Yeah. <laughs> I can get paid to talk. <laughs> Bobby. What are, you, what are you it. saying to me right now? Hold, <laughs> hold on, hold on. You t t t talk nice, speak we can nice. Do this. I can do this. I can yeah. pay to talk. What kind of words, man? Yeah. You, you know, do I got a word a minute? Like, what's going on? Like in my head, I'm like, what? Because uh, yeah. you hear the radio, you grow up, you know, grow up listening to so many things, and I'm dial switching, and it's like, Ksh, estás escuchando la voz 97. <laughs> and Ksh, you're listening to 103. Ksh, Uno, zero, <laughs> tre, punto, siete. <laughs> and you keep going and going and going. Yeah. And in my head, I'm like, they get people to, they pay people to do that. <gasps> I felt dumb. I was, yeah. I was basically in college. And then all of a sudden, I had this like whoo, whoo, freshman year of college. Everybody going, but no, well, you always told, well, you speak both languages. Oh, you're you're so well spoken. Oh, you can communicate this. Oh, you can mm -hmm. do that. I I was basically a translator from my family growing up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like with with language barrier issues, yeah. uh, as far as whether we were in church or it was a, a community activist event, we were protesting something. It was like, I, I, man, I okay. remember translating for my teachers, translating for my parents, translating for professionals, translating in situations where you should have paid somebody to do that. For sure. And I went. That's a job? That's I was a it. kid doing that for the free for my pay. <laughs> what? Like, I could communicate? You gotta get, communication? Hey, you got to go back and, and just write them out a ticket. Hey, this is for all that lost. That, man. <laughs> all payment. Freshman year of college messed me up, man, because I was like, bruh, I can. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what what kind of jobs? What y'all got? And they yeah. were like, well, interpreter, marketing, um, you can go into this, blah, and radio. And I went, Radio, yeah. Man, I've been a, I've, I've been a, a a little radio nerd for forever. Yeah, I never thought I could get paid for that. For sure. How did you manage? Radio. Yeah. <laughs> how how did you manage to get your foot in the door as far as the journey goes? Because now you you got had this light bulb go off, and mm -hmm. you're like, I'm gonna do communications. Mm -hmm. How long after that uh, of of sticking with that were you able to? Because I'm guessing you started off as an intern. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. What's that process like? Like, what, what, how do you even go about that? What, you just go to every radio station and, and, and sign something out hoping that they call back? Or what, what is that process like? Man, I got a, I got a super dope plug on an internship yeah. in this building. Literally in this very building. This is where it all started. For me, this is ground zero. You know what I'm saying? Where where, <laughs> where I cut my teeth, man. Yeah. So in college, I needed to do an internship to fulfill my, you know, communication, my graduation requirements, right? So um it was my junior year, end of my junior year, going into my senior year. I needed an internship. So I took an internship. One of my mentors at school was like, Well, it's a little bit of a drive, but if you can make it to Milwaukee, I know you want to get into radio. I, I know somebody that's in a radio station. Yeah. They don't work on air, but they're saying that they need interns. Let me know. Mm -hmm. I went, of course. Look, I could drive to Milwaukee. No, and I couldn't. Couldn't afford it. I was like, <laughs> I'll get there. I'll, I'll get, get there. there. Yeah. I, hey, Diosito, prove. You yeah. know, God provides. We're going to figure it out, whatever it is, man. I, I was basically working two and a half jobs, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
living off campus at the time too so I was just trying to grind. I had the car. I was going to make it do what it do. I didn't yeah. care that it was like an hour to get here. Whatever. I'm going to get here. Yeah. I'll I feel like internship. when you got that passion driving behind you and you know this is something that it's meant to be, um, I've said this in many interviews, it falls in place. Like with this, I never went to, I went to school and those prerequisites, mm-hmm. you, like you say, you mm-hmm. take them and it just, that first semester was just like, School isn't me, and I'm I'm okay, I'm okay with I'm okay with it because you know, but it it I mean it did take me to the age of 32 to like snap out and be like I'm a married man I got kids I really need to stop doing the same shit that I'm doing every day. Mm-hmm. I feel you know that. What I mean, no, I feel that. I really got to a point where it was, it's like I'm what. I'm doing everything. Every year is the same. Around the same time, I could pinpoint. I'm doing the same. I'm doing the same stuff. Right. So you know, with that, it's <laughs> like wash and repeat, man. Yeah. When that pandemic hit, <laughs> bro, that put so much perspective in my life where I could slow things down and just really take it for what it was, and and I really analyzed my life and. You know, it, this goes back to, you know, how that passion that got you to to go to school or to drive it, how many hours it was going to take, but you were going to get there because of the opportunity. Mm-hmm. And through that pandemic, it, for me, it was like, I'm going to, I'm no matter what, I'm going to start off on this venture and I'm not going to let anyone sway me out of it. And here I am today, you know what I mean? Doing my thing and uh, 10 toes, man, 10 toes down. It hasn't even been a, a year with this platform, but I mean, to be in front of you, Ali, uh, GA, uh, Reggie, uh, Promise, like, it tells me that, you know, when you have it in your head, you want to do something, and people say that, like, it's cliche, Um, it's cliche, if you put your mind to it, you can do it, but it's really truthful. You right? just gotta apply yourself, right, man? <laughs> right, it's that drive, that, that drive, drive, man, and and then you just think like, well, if this were if this is what they're offering, right? Like you yep. thinking, I'm gonna do it, right? Because that's yep. that's what's present. I mean, I hadn't heard from a radio station anywhere else that was yeah. offering some, so yeah, I'm gonna drive to wherever Hell's Corners yeah. is. Yeah, I thought you said this was in Milwaukee, bro. <laughs> what do you mean, like, right? Like, yeah, all right. So here I go making trips for the Brewers uh, baseball post game show. Okay, chilling right mm-hmm. in 2014. Yeah, yeah, 2013, 2014. Like Beautiful. internship, back and forth, man. I draw. I'd I'd either get off of work there mm-hmm. and head straight here, or you know, head here, go to work some mm-hmm. days. But there was times where I wasn't getting back to to good old Sheboygan, Wisconsin, until. Mm-hmm. Two thirty three, you know what I'm saying, and then it's like, man, I got class the next day, I got practice the next day, but yeah. then it's just what you did. Now thinking back, it's like, I guess that was a little determination to make something For work, sure, right? Man. Make it shake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. So how was that experience when you first started with the people you were work, you were interning for? Yeah. Was there any type of, oh, he's the rookie. Let's put the bags on his neck. No. Nah. Let him carry it around. He has to go get me a coffee. Go get like anything like that. Or was it mm. th- th- was it welcoming and they were just like, You're one of you're one of the people who'd like So honestly, most of the time that I ended up being here, it was a little more low key because, you know, sometimes you know the brewers play at night. Yeah. Right? A, a lot of the time. So mm. I'd end up being here after hours, so it was just like the cats running the show, and then the interns, whoever was on the board, and maybe a couple stragglers that were still here doing some things. But on air staff, it it, it was like whoever was left for the night. Yeah, you know the building was empty. It was dry. Man, it was a skeleton crew. By the time I would get here, sometimes, so there wasn't like some initiation, man. And quite frankly, I basically initiated myself because, man, I, I run on CCPT. Yeah. Col- Columbia color people time, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so <laughs> oh, <Josh>. <laughs> 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 dog, dog. <laughs> man, God, bro, t- you t- made me. <laughs> time is an irrelevant construct to me, my boy. You feel me? So I'm like, I'm, I'm looking at the clock. I'm pretty sure I had to be there yeah. or here at like. 
you yeah. know, to make sure I was here for like, the game was supposed to rap about. For sure. 845, 9, give or take, right? You know how baseball mm-hmm. can be. Oh, yeah. And before them new clocks, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, five hour <laughs> game. We're like, oh my God. Man. Dude, at the mound, taking about for a minute and a half. Like, <sighs> like my uh, boy, come on. Am my I son. composed? Nah, you're not. you not, man. <laughs> you not. Just, just swing, bro. You about to get struck anyway. Yeah. But I'm thinking, I could get there. Like, what's it going to take me? I found out real quick how long it was going to take me, man. I was thinking, 50 minutes, mm-hmm. tops, bruh, hit construction, hit traffic, hit just the highway. <laughs> yeah, man. <dog. laughs> that 50 minutes hit, and I still had 30 minutes to go, bro. I was like, Damn. dog, Damn. dog, <laughs> oh. Uh-huh. So I'm trying to just get there, get there, get there, right? I'm thinking, if I hit it, <laughs> I, can, <laughs> I can get there. Yeah. Just ended up being like probably still a good – about 30 minutes late, man. And, yeah. and they had to start. I mean, we had there was other interns in the room, but that was my first day. And man, Lord bless him. Steve Sparky Pfeiffer, man, that's in this building to this day. He was the first person I officially, officially met when mm-hmm. I started my internship because he was on, on the show with Tim Allen at the time. Okay. He he let me in this side door. And I was like, man, like, I'm really sorry. And I told him straight up, I was like, bro, I, I just didn't anticipate it properly. I ain't even I, I ain't get here. Like, man, yeah. I, I I got nothing for you. you don't like, know. Yep. And he said, Hey, we understand? Like we all we all get that one, right? They just don't don't let it happen again. Don't let it happen again. So I'm like, say so, less, si señor. Yeah. <laughs> so so you get that that first impression that you didn't let uh, That was my yeah, that was my initiation. That, that was my that haze, but yep. the fact that I was about late, late, and I was like, This is it. I'm about to get fired. It's a wrap. So going forward, you know, as you got more uncomfortable with it, because you know, as as you go, you absorb all this knowledge, and you you, you basically elevate and make a name for yourself. Um, you're an air personality, mm-hmm. so um, during that time, were you practicing on on the ways of of you know bringing this personality to life? Or it was just more like just, I'm just gonna be myself every day, and then you know what I mean. When I get my when I get my shot, I'm gonna take the opportunity. The one thing I tried to work on is just being more upbeat. Yeah. Right. It, me naturally, I'm animated. I, I'm out there. I can sometimes be. Uh, what What did my wife call call me? Um, not excessive. Man, I'm blanking on the word. Extravagant. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, extra and then she read the definition and I was like, Am I extravagant? Maybe. Maybe maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Right. But I'm I'm like a quiet extravagant at the same time, man. So working on my animation was something that I needed to work on in, in radio, cause if if I'm not thinking about the fact that I'm behind the mic or then at least it was like I I just sit here and talk like this, man. You know, I, yeah. realistically, like if we're just kicking it. Hey, what up, man? What up, man? man. What was the word? Hey, yeah. man, and I mumble, man. Sometimes I'll say a couple words like this. You saw them brewers. Man, you, man, you <laughs> catch that game. Man. We're tripping, man. man. What, what, you know, and then people man. are like, huh? And my wife all like, huh? So I, I, work, I, I had to work on kind yeah. of getting that up there. And I'm not by no means quiet. You know, I'm not by no means shy, but I'm... I'm just like reserved and almost like low key in my in my own, especially sometimes if I get caught zoning out or thinking on some other stuff, like that mm-hmm. that's what I needed to dang near do. Yeah. What what do you think because now you're going through this this career, you're interning. What do you think were the pros and cons um within this new setting for you? And also what were the barriers you had to get over? Uh pros and cons, well, the the pro was just being here. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Being in the building, you know, once you start to get a little more comfortable, um, you start to pop around, talk to people, you begin put on different shifts and eventually maybe you get asked to do a different job. So I was like, all right, cool. I'll be here. And I started talking to everybody. And the pro was just to be in the building around people that you admired. Yeah. Because no matter what. You know, you still get in the car and you listen to radio, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't have an aux in my car. You know what I'm saying? I didn't necessarily carry CDs. So. I listened to the radio, right? Yeah. And, and Kiss FM was kind of that main staple station that you bought between, right, between everything that's in Milwaukee. And that was six years ago, seven years ago. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's mm-hmm. like, early, or more than that, honestly. So it's like, yeah. You, you go through and go, all right. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, man. So, um, yeah, man. Like it's it's just, yeah. I I don't even I don't even know, man. Like mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't even know. You just kind of you just kind of like get there. Yeah. So it's the path. Yeah. It's getting like, through it, the path and through those barriers. You know what I mean? Like you just you take the leap, leap of faith. Like right. Like I mean and. And, and I'm trying, like straight up, I'm I'm trying to think of like a a con, but the con as far as like what it was and and goofy little stuff aside, man. Straight up, the the con was the fact that I I, I got in my own in my own way sometimes, and mm-hmm. I didn't get on there as fast as I was thinking I was gonna be, you yeah. know, because I was like, man, I really want to do this. I'm really applied to it. People are telling me I'm good once I started getting in the building and talking to more people. So it's like. The pro was being here. The con was just being here and not being able to be on air right mm-hmm. away. Because yeah. in my head, I'm like, man, I feel like I've wasted time already. Let me get to it, yeah. right? So it's like just just to just to do it was was like the next step. Yeah. So what do you feel was a barrier? Like- um, I mean, space, space. You know, space. It, it's mm. it. It has been. Um, and in my in my experience, it still is a competitive, you mm-hmm. know, job. Entertainment in the whole, not even just radio, but in radio, you work for certain things. And one of the most coveted things for anybody that's in radio is to do mornings somewhere. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And when you think of a job, and one comes about, and and when you're applying yourself seriously. It's like the competition, man. One of the hurdles was everybody else because they could bring in somebody from from a whole nother state knowing you're right here. Wow. Right? And yeah. one, of, one of the biggest things was going, man, when you get passed up for something that you feel like you could have done, yeah, could have done well, you know, not to say easily, but you could have. we all learn, right? Like, and I, I, I'm here to learn. I'm a student of the game, and I want to keep, keep being a student of the game, right? Yeah. So the hurdle for me was just getting over the fact that, all right, maybe it wasn't for me knowing I – I felt like it was, right? Yeah. Like seeing opportunities pass you by and going, mm-hmm. dog, I, I could have. I yeah. if y'all if y'all do need it, let me know, right? And for sure. Standing back up, you get knocked down and, and like the the biggest hurdle was just sticking through it, man, not getting demoralized, right? Cuz mm-hmm. it's it's almost like a cutthroat industry where you you, you gone, man, and it's happening. Yeah. You know, you're gone. And you've seen it. I've, you know, <laughs> I've, right, I've lived it, right? Yeah, like, I mean, just in the time you said you've been here, um, you know, you were on you you'd be in here. I'd hear you on the radio uh-huh. with when Ali was with Riggs and how long was Riggs on air with her? Uh, man, like Fit, like like ten, I want to say like ten ten, 10 years. years ten okay. years something like that yeah like maybe maybe give or take right like I'm yep. pretty sure it was like a ten year period where it was a minute dog man well and there was there was a rotation of a, of a few people right yep. like there's a, a a few cats that have sat in different chairs in this spot right but mm-hmm. at the end of the day they were the ones that were together the longest like yes. the, that pair yeah so. Yeah, man, I, I was coming into a show that phew, it had been established. Yeah. Going, dang. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. So your first time on air, mm-hmm. you said that was, that was like the, the graveyard shift? Yeah, the gra- the that, gra- third, that third shift, third man, shift. that graveyard shift, that overnight, man, midnight to sunlight. What, well, in that first um, time being on air, do you remember the emotions that were going through, like yeah. how you felt? Yeah. How was that? It, it was... Man, I don't even think I got a word for it. Like you just—it was like one of those, like oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's just a, an an an, ex, an expression of emotion where you just like I gotta do a lap, I gotta hit some push-ups, I gotta do some. Yeah. It was like this, not an adrenaline rush, but yeah, you know, a little bit. Like it was just, it was weird. Yeah. Uh, you ever heard like Mike Tyson describe fighting? Like it was just this weird sensation of you, you don't. Like yeah, you just don't. It's inexplicable, man. It's inexplicable, and mm-hmm. it, it just things run through you a, a, a crazy set of emotions, and you like, all right, I'm, we here. Yeah. And my first live shift was a graveyard shift. Mm-hmm. I asked, I was like, yo, can I can I come do a live? Because the guy who I replaced, um, he recorded his stuff. Oh, and I was like, wow. I was like, man, can. <laughs> Can I I'll come in and do it live? What's up? I'm trying to I'm trying to do it live. Yeah. I want to be up in here and they're like, well, yeah, gotta be honest, you know, you gotta be here though during the day, because we need you here. We got clients, you know, we got 
other talent that that might need you to help record. We've got whatever Jack needs you to help do. Wow. We got commercials. We got this. We got that. So we need you throughout the day. So Look at you, DZ, grinding eventually, day, you, night. You know, you can't, I mean, two but, hours of sleep. Oh, not even, not even, because they were like, you could do it a little bit, but like, yeah. honestly, you can't make a habit of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And you know what it is sometimes? Like, yep. they're like, this is your job. This is what you get to do within your job. You feel me? Yep. So I was like, I'll take what I can get, though. You mm-hmm. know, my voice is out there. And, and yeah, who's who's listening, right? You think, who's listening between 12 and 5 a.m., 5, 6 in the morning? Like, Yes, sir. Uh, uh, only a few. The, the truck drivers and them factory workers, right? Yeah. Like the OGs and the people that are up, you know, late doing what they do. So I was yeah. like, I, I'm going to take this seriously, though, in whatever capacity. But my first, my first, first, first shift— I was, man, in here, and they, they told me, I was like, you can only do it for, like, a couple hours. You don't got to worry about it. Like, you do it, like, 12 to 3, 12 to 4, whatever. But I stayed. Yeah. I stayed, man. I knocked it out, and then I, I got nervous. I was like, man, I, I don't know what they need to do in the morning. So I I, uh, I voice tracked what they call it. Like, I, I pre-recorded, mm-hmm. um, like, my, my last 30 minutes, mm-hmm. right? Last 45, maybe, just so I could get up out of here. And the room could cool down, right? Like, yeah. I was like, I was in, cause I was in here moving, man. I was just getting all this energy out. I was geeked. I was like, I'm doing this. Like, whatever it is, the vision I had, it, this is starting. It's starting right, right here. Yeah. You know, in this room, right? Literally mm-hmm. in this room. I was like, cool. So I was like, just getting all that energy out. But them last, them last 35, 45, I was like, all right, man. they need this space. Your morning show, morning show. It's the morning show. For sure. Oh, it's the morning <laughs> show, bro, right? <laughs> Like all hell kind man. of stuff, man. It was wild. So now you're in the swing. You finally, you know, getting comfortable. You finally, um, you know, starting to open up. People are starting to recognize you. Um, who are mentors and influences during that duration of, of moving forward and getting your name out there, showing people your work ethic and how how much you want this? Who yeah. were some, some mentors for you? Um, well, I mean, in, in the building itself, man, uh, somebody that was always a strong advocate for, for me and my talents was the person that first let me kind of practice on the microphone here, Nathan Graham. Um, he w- went on, um, he was on air, he did APD, assistant programming director, mm-hmm. and then moved on, took a job in like Philly, or no, excuse me, took a job, I think, in Detroit, yeah. and then Philly, progressed on, um, and on to be a VP and all that good stuff. And now wow. he's he's exploring other endeavors in his life, man. But wow. that man, I mean, as far as mentoring, I came in here a lot and would ask him, be like, bro, how's this sound? What do you think? What's going on? Like, how, how can I be better? I mean, at the end of the day, he was kind of the dude that was going to give me the, the tap to say, hey, he he can get next, right? Like, yeah. you should give him a chance like, and put me on. So um, I would ask him a bunch of stuff, man, and, and realistically just – try to stay in his pocket and, and pick his brain. And that man knows a lot of music and a lot about music, right? So it was like mm-hmm. just being in the room and, and holding those conversations just from whatever the time was that I could be while he was here and while I was here and our yeah. schedules coincided. Um, it was like, all right, bet, you know, like, that's awesome. let me let me know. Like, especially in the, in the early stages, like, I, I would try to hit him up and talk to him at least once a day, right? Especially yeah. if we're in the building. For yeah. sure, man. You, you absorb that knowledge, man. Right, and, right. That's what it comes down to. I, I man, anybody you can take something from. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I mean that in the sense like I, one of the things I love about talking to people is that you learn. Yeah. And the, the mannerisms and the, the way a person is, like that body language, you can in that little moment of of talk, you could take a lot away from it if you Assert yourself. Right, right. You know, but yeah, man, I, 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 I got to say in the talk that we've had so far, it's just seeing what I, I love most about this journey you've been on is about the drive you've had. You get For what sure. I mean? Yeah. Look where you're at. Find, you're Like, in my eyes, you finally made it. Oh, yeah. You, oh, man. You finally made it. Yes. Because you're a host on the morning show for 103.7. And when I was talking to D, D, uh, DJ GA, um, we were talking about it. This is a prestige station. It is. It's historic, it's na- really. It's, 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 it's national. <laughs> it's you, out here. And, and you are on the it shift. And But right. 
How was that when you? It's like being in the majors and you get your number called up. How was that? Yeah. When you first heard, like, how did that come about of you getting that that spot on the the morning shift for one hundred three point seven? Right. So, um, I was at a at a talk radio station across town, right? Yep. Um, and at the time, I, I had zero to no complaints. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like really enjoying my time, enjoying the people, and I mean, speaking of mentors, found a plethora of mentors over there that have mm-hmm. held me down and and continue to hold me down, right? Like where um, I was good. I wasn't looking. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't applying. I wasn't interested at the time, right? And mm-hmm. realistically, I was focused on grinding. I was focused on, you know, my wife and baby. And yeah. I was focused on staying out the way. Right, like mm-hmm. trying my best. Right, try yeah, my try my man. best to my stay about the just way. Get me. <laughs> try just try my best, man. Like I was yeah. just trying just trying to live and survive, man, and make it through. See another twenty four, right? Like it was nothing crazy, but for sure. That's what I was trying to do, man. And mm-hmm. and, and it got a call and they said, Hey, you know, b- before you hear it kind of from anybody else kind of thing, um we got we got this Possible situation, aka, you know, yeah, right. we, yeah, we, we right. got we got yeah. this going down. You know what? What we mm-hmm. end up figuring out is was that that Riggs had left. Yep. Um, but there's like we we got something happening, um, and you know, as far as conversations go, would you be interested or would you be available to have a conversation? And I was like, well. I guess I hadn't thought about it, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. But it depends on what it is, because I was doing mornings over at Truth, right? So I I was oh, chilling. Oh wow, like, for I, real? Yeah, I was, I was doing mornings over there. Oh wow, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it, was, it was myself and Mel. You know, my guy Joe was doing the show, and then he ended up departing to explore other endeavors. You know, mm-hmm. and then it was just myself and Mel, and then DJ Brother Z. He was behind the glass producing. We were over there doing mornings, so we were just cooling. Like at, at 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 that rate, we were just doing mornings, getting yeah. through it. You know what I'm saying? On yep. the grind. It was a new station, um, or newer, I should say. Excuse me. And then had just moved to a new location, so I was kind of in a this is whole explorative space and in an explorative place in my career too, where it was like, all right, well, I'm I'm here to see where this goes. Yeah, like this is a journey that we're taking right now, right? But. They presented the opportunity and and were like, well, um, it would also be for mornings. Yeah, and I, and I went, <clears throat> huh? <laughs> what you mean? <laughs> on, yeah, and on one the yeah, I, I was man. like, oh, well, and you know, you you obviously kind you you play it as cool as you can. You got to, bro. But you I, can't <laughs> get too excited. I said, what? Like, <laughs> poker <laughs> play. <Come on>. play. <laughs> no, but I was like, wait. It, 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 it was that initial like, what? It just it hits you. But then man. wait, 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 uh, wait. Who who laid me? <laughs> who me? All did he tell you? No, man. And it, it's it's, sens- it's sensitive. Wow. It's sensitive. So it was like the first conversation I had when they when they said A, I went B, and they're like, see you soon. And I was like, all right, get it, get it. All right, I, okay. I mean, yeah. I guess hit me up. And the fact the fact of the matter was like. It's not like I was scrambling. It's not like I was pressed. You know what I'm saying? At at, at that right now, um, going going on six months, mm-hmm. um, I was comfortable. Yeah, my wife was good. My baby was good. I was good. I mean, I was working a lot, but I was I was comfortable. I was on air, and then I was also producing the evening show. So I was the first show of the day and the last show of the day. Yeah. So my days were long, and I had another another full time job in between. Wow. I was managing the retail store, man. So it's like. I was out. I was man, out here, man. Geez, but it's like, bro, the grind, man. I was going to ask is. you what your work ethic <laughs> like, but here we got you right now, dog. <laughs> Dude's telling me, he's, yeah, I'm going to go host this event right after we do this interview. <laughs> man, it, it's one of those things, man. Yeah. Man, awesome. So now you on you on the morning show. Bro. Yeah. How has that been uh, working alongside a, a legend, Ali Faith? Dude, you said it yourself. Yeah. A legend. A literal icon, a staple. Yes, you know, and I, I could keep throwing one word, you, sure. it, um, amazing words to describe somebody as, right? But like, it's Ali Faith. It's somebody that mm-hmm. realistically 
you you don't not hear on this radio station. Yeah. You know, she's the, the longest standing person to be on air here. And mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that I ain't even done the numbers. I'm not good at math. I, I got dyscalculia. You when we did saying? the when we did the radio visit uh the first time, um, you know, freshman year I've been listening to her. Right. <laughs> I mean it, <laughs> Bro, I've I've been in the room when people have have either have had the the opportunity to to stop by or just been on the phone yeah. when they're like, I've been listening to you since I was a toddler. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> and to me, I'm <laughs> I'm a toddler on the radio in my head, right? Like, yeah. I ain't even ten yet. <laughs> you feel yeah, me? Yeah, like, for sure. <laughs> I ain't even double digits in the game, but I'm going. Wow, you. You really, we joked about it. You raised some of these kids, man. Yeah, we did it on air, man. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, like, you, we are your kids. <laughs> you raised welcome. a lot of people. You're okay. <laughs> Working with somebody of that magnitude, yeah. Like you, you think it would be overwhelming, mm-hmm. and I guess maybe for somebody it might be. But speaking for me personally, that opportunity, opportunity alone, you know, is within itself like a mentorship. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Like she she gets radio in a different way and has been doing it in different capacities, but always had the pleasure of being on air, you know, for as far as I know her career has taken her. So it's like the fact that she's been able to do it here for so long and be successful, yeah. that's something to take into consideration and credit, you know, immediately off rip. So it's like you got to give her her flowers, you know. Oh, definitely. Jump, we'll right? do this for her. Shout out AF, man. Yeah. Shout, out, shout out to the sis, man. Big sis have been this piece. Yeah. But working with her day to day, you just see how regular she is. And I don't mm. mean like, oh, she's just a regular degular. I mean, we're all regular mm. degular, but she's just normal, man. Like she goes, she goes through stuff in her life. She has ups, she has downs, stuff with her boys as a family, yeah. as a you know, as a woman, as a person. Like, and we come in here every day and the reality yeah. the reality is our goal is to not just be entertaining, but Keep a, a sense of positive energy and um like morale, right? Yeah. Like we're not cheerleaders, man, but you don't want to hear us go, man. Yeah. Today sucks. And I'm I'm not gonna cap. Some days yeah. suck. And yeah, you'll say it, yeah. but you find a way on how to spin it, like to spin it into a direction of like keep positive, yeah. keep going. But uh, she, she got it like that, man. And it's like I, I feel naturally able to do that, but being in rooms with people that are mm. to that caliber, it's yeah. like, all right, bet. How, how do you feel um, with growth within you within these past six months mm-hmm, of being mm-hmm. uh, a host on the morning show? How do you feel? Um, yeah, what type of growth do you feel you've had since beginning that? Because, like you said, man, it's it's a kind of a mentorship. You're you're alongside someone who's done it for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like how 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 for you has. Have you noticed anything change in the way with your your uh, with the way you handle your shows? Um, any yeah. type of routines or right? Yeah. And so the, I'll say there's a there's more consistency, and and part of that is because coming from talk radio, the consistency and dang near the only consistency is mm-hmm. you and yeah. whatever you bring to the table as far as topics because. There wasn't um, a dedicated structure or like a you can't say this, you can't talk about that as long as you stay within those FCC restrictions and limitations mm-hmm. and, and ain't trying to get that violation. We we weren't limited to talk about anything and talk radio. And, and nor are we, you know, on like the music side. But what I'm saying is uh, the music does draw, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, yeah. like the music gets factored into what's called the clock to where the time that we spend talking – is different because we have to obviously play music, which means that the time we do get to talk is that much more precious. Yeah. You know, you got to try to find a concise way to say something. And that's hard for a long-winded buff, buff person like me. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm long, I, I like to talk, man. I, I got As soon as somebody told me I could get paid to talk, I said, bad. Yeah. Bad. We going to figure this out. I don't know what that means, but we're going to figure this out. Hey, DZ, I want to let you know we going to figure this <laughs> out. I'm telling you, me too. <laughs> <laughs> you do your own. We're going to figure this out. out. You know? And and that's that's really, like, all we're doing, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, You know, it, 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 it's awesome. Like, um, what does it mean? for you to be this like representation of you know minorities for for our city Mm -hmm. you know this is a big role man this isn't no lightweight role i'll tell you outsider looking in this isn't nothing little this is big this is flex this is 
<laughs> ah, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> no, I'll tell you, it doesn't feel like that. You yeah. know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it, it doesn't feel like a a flex. Yeah. But then when I'll have the smaller conversations, if you will, because the- at the end of the day, man, to me, I'm I'm coming to work. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Like, it's what I chose to do, but I, I chose to do it daily. So yeah. it's like sometimes you'll wake up and you're like, dang, man, she meant to, my back hurting right now. You know what I'm saying? Yes, like, sir. My back tight. You know, I, I, my <laughs> my stomach ain't right. Yeah. And I'm just I'm just trying to sleep a good night, man. And I, I got to get up and we get up early. But it, it's a uh, man. It. <sighs> I like I I don't I man like you just you just, yeah. you just it gets it yeah you just gotta think about this man you, you, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, I, I guess, <laughs> hey you you gotta uh you gotta do it yeah you know and you gotta be here and you gotta be present you know and mm-hmm. it's 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 a beautiful thing well I'll say like this I'm proud I'm proud that you 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 have that seat. Um, it, it, it's, it's a type of, it sends out a type of inspiration. Um, yeah. You just work for something, you know, you, you, you started from the bottom. Now we're here. Right. Right. You well, know, and, <laughs> man, I mean, for real. And talking to my wife, right? Yeah. Like she, she's a teacher. She'll just say something to me. Yeah. Right. And this, this is, this is what I mean by like some of those small conversations. Like she'll, she'll say something to me about, Maybe it's like a kid that mm-hmm. was listening on the way to work with her mom or somebody will text us or they'll call in. And those small conversations where it's like, you guys brighten our day. Or if somebody will say, Weba, oh, yeah, Weba. <laughs> Bruh. man, and by no means is that my phrase. Yeah. Right? Like I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not the originator. I'm not the creator. No. I ain't give it his definition. I'm just a proponent. Like I'm a beacon of the web if you will. You you gave some you gave volume. That's what you <laughs> did, dog. But but hearing people say WEPA yep. to me back is like uh as far as like in even in the the, the minuscule taste of representation, mm-hmm. that's huge because we we don't necessarily know too many people like us that get to do what we do and, and oh. enjoy it. And right? that's that that's that's exactly what I mean, man. We don't. So it's like you're in this position, and it's like, yes, yeah, get it, yeah, you know, keep following it. Um, you have this platform now, and 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 you know, you you've become a public figure. Um, with that, what ways do you work with the community? Yeah. Um, and, and 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 giving back with the platform you have, man. I mean, I'm I'm always down to to yep. do anything. Look, right, you're right like, here, right now. Like, <laughs> I mean, no, nah, for for yep. real though, man. For real, like it, whether it's a, a community cleanup effort, whether it's literally volunteering for an event, whether you know it's emceeing something or just being around. Like if if you got something going down and you just want somebody to come through and kick it, like. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm trying to show love. Like I, pff, I see you, but man, believe me, I see you, dude. <laughs> I, I see you out there. I'm just like, yes, that's one of the main reasons why I was like, oh, man, we got to get him on the show. We got to get him on. Like I'm for it, man. You're so invested. You, Ali, you know what I mean. All, all these other people on my platform, like you're invested in the community, and that's that's number one for me. Yeah, because that that's the reason why I'm doing this, man. For me, nothing's off the table, right? Yeah. Like I, I've lived in a few places in Milwaukee now. My wife and I are looking for another home, mm-hmm. and that that's the thing. Like we we want to invest ourselves not just in a home, but in a community, right? Yeah. So it's like wherever we live, it, we want it to be somewhere where we're comfortable, that we enjoy, but that where we're going to be able to be a be about yeah. as much of a hermit crab as as Poppy can be, being yeah. at home. You know what I'm saying? Curled up with a blanket. Yeah. I like to be out, and when I'm out, I want to talk to people. I want to see my neighbors. I want to say what up. Like I want to know if there's you know a little festival going down or what the park look like over here. Like, well, we got to pick up ba- basketball, soccer. What's going on? Like, which, for sure. What what cleats or shoes do I got to grab? Right. Like, I want to be that you know family. Right. Especially oh, with definitely. with kids now. Not looking to ever be melancholy or. That only teach them a life that's indoors. Like we want to be out and we want to be about and we want to build stuff and we want them to understand that you know the the confines of the space that you're in mm-hmm. is realistically only limited to the confines of your mind. So it's like if you can put yourself in a in a in a frame where you can do something different, no matter where you're at, bro, you're always gonna be good. Right? Man. You're always gonna be good because realistically, you're never gonna be stuck. Man, <laughs> Look, he's, get, he's, dro- he's dropping jazz right now. <laughs> Oh, man. So where do you see yourself in the next five? Man, you know what? That's funny because um, 
I was talking about this recently with with some friends, you know, my wife as well. I don't know. Yeah. You know, realistically, five five years is such a a vast. A vast, yeah. At that rate, you know, Samurai, our son, young Sammy, he's going to be turning seven. I love that nickname, Whoa, thank you, man. He's going to be turning seven. You know, our, our other baby... Ooh, Congratulations. Thank you, man. Gracias, gracias, gracias. I got to do this right after. And then this, this is the last one for you. Live, here we are with DZ, soon to be a dad again. Hey. <laughs> I said dad again. He's still a dad. Doubling up, man. But Doubling nah, up. D- dad, double dad, man. Double dad now, man. We're, we're having another one. And um, yeah. it's, it's, it's surreal, right? Because it's like, whoa, mm-hmm. again, we weren't, we weren't, planning it we weren't trying for it but yeah. when it happens you're like dang all right i get i got whoa <laughs> i we got a how do i put this me and my wife we we tried and then we got a false alarm it was okay. like a, a, a the test was yeah false. yeah and i remember when we got that one because when she told me i think i think i am and i'm like it was r- right after we got married and i'm like yes yes let's do this boom boom and then it was a false alarm and i'm like damn, damn. Boom, boom. And then we went back to work. <laughs> and uh, now we have a three-year-old. He, he said, dang, I'll be home in 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love you, babe. But, no, but, um, but nah, man, it's, it, you know what fatherhood is like, man. It, it'll take you for a whirlwind and dang, dang near make you want to do everything you can differently for some reason. Yeah. So it's like now with that, it's like the main thing I want to do is really invest myself in whatever I can. So for me, nothing's off the table as far as yeah. what to involve myself in with the community in any community, man. Like sure. Milwaukee, some people will call it small walkie, but it's like, put it to you like this, the city, downtown Milwaukee, it's a big city. That's a it big is a city. big city and yeah. it's growing. There's yeah. plenty of construction going on. That could tour right off the lake over by yeah. Summerfest. Like, that's just one of many. The third right? ward is being rebuilt. Exploding Walker's right Point. Now. Um, Exploding right now. Like, they're popping up new buildings left and right. All yep. of a sudden, there's a whole rooftop bar next to the fight serve. I was yeah. like, what? I, well, I swear I, that just got approved. What happened? I forgot who I was talking to, but our city revenued, if not last year, the year before, $2.2 billion. That's crazy. $2.2 billion. The and that's downtown, in the year where it was supposed to make far uh, yeah, more. Far more, man. And, and it just goes to show, like, yeah, people look at have this perception that we're small. Right. And we're far from it. We're not. We're, far, we're not. <laughs> so it's like having the luxury for somebody to have, let's call it a, a full home, right? Yeah. Not be in, like, a high rise down and, and be seven minutes from downtown. Yeah. That's a blessing. So it's like if you go to a metropolized city— all mm-hmm. of a sudden, that twenty minute commute is nothing when you're going downtown, right? But like people will live out the way and be like, "Man, I ain't trying to drive thirty minutes. I ain't trying to drive twenty minutes." I yeah, I put that into perspective. Oh, mentioning again, we, like we're looking for homes. Mm-hmm. I'm over here stuck on the side, going, "Man, I ain't trying to drive fifteen minutes." Shit. Knowing dang well, yeah, it's nothing. It's nothing, dude. <laughs> and 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 you know enough streets to be able to bop around yep. and get you there. And it, if it's twenty, you gonna get there in you seventeen. You gonna find this shortcut? <laughs> yeah. As long you, as you don't hit a pothole, you gonna get there in seventeen. That's man. right. Like, so. <laughs> It, it's, it's it's the fact that the city is ever growing too, and it's got so much potential to keep growing yeah. on um, on top of the beauty that is already within Milwaukee. Yeah. That it's like, bro, I'm tr- I'm trying to stay locked in. You, yeah. this city gave me a baby, and it's gonna add it up and give me another one. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm forever grateful and indebted to the mill, man. Yeah, man. And I, and I gotta say, man, it makes me proud to to know someone like you. You know, since I've met you. You've been open. It's it's been an open channel of communication. Um, the vibes are always great, and and I appreciate that because that's how you tell the difference. You know what I mean? Like, I meet uh, through these interviews. I meet a lot of people. Yeah, and oh, I'll I'm say sure. I'll say the one thing is it's ego. Mm. I know there's variations of it. Yeah, yeah. you got people who are humble, mm. but it's it, it it it's sad to see the ones that that just over their head. And some of them didn't even get to get on the platform because of it. Right. And it, it's, it's staying true to that. But I, that's one thing I appreciate appreciate about you is that you are a very uh, humble human being. Like, you're, you, you're me. Like, and I, I, I feel that. So um, I appreciate that. Like, 
that says a lot about character over everything. And I know Milwaukee, we're blessed to have someone like you on the airway, you know, just giving out this 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 constant high up energy every morning from from the like the moment we wake up. So yeah. um what advice would you give to our inner city youth and youth all around? Uh dream. Yeah. Bro, I I know it sounds simple, but dream. Yeah. Envision. Create. Yes. And whatever you do for the life of you, never stop doing so. You know, if yeah. somebody questions it, obviously, you know, family, friends, you know, but if somebody just is doubting you, man, mm -hmm. doubters, naysayers, that all of that. Man, that's the thing that matters the absolute least yeah, in, for sure. in this long road, right? If anything, that mm -hmm. should be your motivation, and that should Definitely. make you want to work harder towards whatever it was that you feel mm -hmm. that passionate about. Okay. If if you got something that is that is tugging at you, whatever that might be, if you got something that's literally calling your name like that, it doesn't matter who's going to be in your way because not everybody's going to like what you do, and not everybody's going to like you. Yeah, for sure, man. I, I through the throughout this journey, man, it, it it has been that you know the the toughest part was getting it up and going. Yeah, I, yeah. People, I, I could tell them my story here, but it, it's it took a lot, man. Right. It took. I had a grind. I had to go into different parts of this city. Most wouldn't go into, but that's a part of that's a part of the grind. That's Those that part, do get rewarded, man. And yeah, it's a part of the dream. The dream that you're talking about. That's right. It's it's believing in yourself. And those naysayers, now they're saying they know me rather than being the naysayer. Right. And they're saying, oh, yeah, I, I grew up with a Nah, man. Like, yeah. Right. I appreciate people. I'm known by a lot of people, but my circle is very small. Yeah, I feel and that. I will let you know that's the, the, the greatest lesson I've learned in life. Keep your circle small. Keep your circle small. Um, and, and, and just it, it's so true to the to the saying of you know you are your company you yeah. are who you surround yourself with the company you keep man the company you keep but man i can't i can disagree yeah. i can disagree man but hey you the company i'm keeping now man that's so, right, so, right we out here man <laughs> this man, Colombian Independence Day hey. coming up. We got plenty of stuff going on. Hey, let down. me know. The barbecue coming, man. Six pack of Maltas <laughs> coming up, bro. Some Maltas, boy, dog. Boy, boy. Talk about it. It's exquisite. It's exquisite. <laughs> it's exquisite. Oh, man, DZ. I, I honestly appreciate you coming on here, sharing this, this energy, uh, telling me about who you are. To, to everyone that's, that's going to be watching this, man, it, it's... This is the blessing of what I like. I'm trying to do is it's just meeting people and finding out their story, and it's just like yes, dude. It's like a a type of how you just can't man yeah. get over it. You can't it's, explain it, it, man. You can't explain, you can't explain it. it. It just does something to you. I got you, the right? goosebumps right now talking <laughs> about it, but it's like it's that. It's it's just it, it's it's so great to have this, and and like so many people are participating in it, and now it's. It's shooting forward, but how can people get a hold of you as far as social platforms? Or do you do? Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, Connect I'm, on, with you. I'm on I'm on social, man. Yeah. I'm an old soul to it, though, man. I be, you know, <laughs> scrolling through sometimes, bro. But uh, all my socials are basically the same. Soy, me, DZ. You know, yeah. Man? S O I M E. The letter D, the letter Z, Z. soy me D Z. Yeah. yeah, that's that's literally it. You, I mean, hit me there. You find my email on there. You, I'm pretty sure the Snapchat, all that stuff, man. Whether I even use it now or not, like it's, it's yeah. all got the same tag to it. It's there. It's there. <laughs> it's there, man. I'm there. My family's there. We all there. Yeah. Well, again, I appreciate you. It's, it's been great, and it, I, this friendship will continue. Um, Dog. You know, I, I, I look forward to the future and what's coming. I'm, I, you know me, I, I, li I listen to the show in the morning. Yeah. Wet by Wednesdays all day, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Wet <Wepa! laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We building in blessings, man. I appreciate you. A lot of love, man. Respect for what you do. Thank like, you. Like, as somebody that, that does... You know, mm -hmm. some so, some of this I couldn't do all of this. Like yeah. you, you out here, man. You out here, and it's a it's, like I said, a blessing, and an honor to yeah. just even sit down with you and look forward to seeing more of the growth, bro. I appreciate you. Hey, man. Well, with that being said, spearhead out. <laughs>